Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning September 6th, 2021. Happy Labor Day guys if you're here in the United States. If you're not here in the United States and you don't have a holiday going on where you live, you can celebrate Labor Day too if you want. <laughs> we'll share it, it's fine. All right, now I do want to announce I am constantly adding brand new seven day meditation challenges over at gumroad.com slash angel souls. Thank you so much to all of you who are getting over there and participating. Not only does it support me and make it possible for me to do this kind of work, but it is doing the energetic work and I love you for it, all right? Uh, next ones up will be Raziel and Gabriel. If you left a suggestion for an archangel, I'm getting to it, but I do put a lot of work into these so that, and they take a little bit to film and to edit and do all that. So they will be there. Just always keep checking back at Angel Souls. No, I lied. <laughs> Gumroad.com slash Angel Souls. Or if you want a personal reading, Angel Souls 444.com. That's the one I'm used to saying all the time. All right. So what the heck's going on? Turmoil, chaos. Um, you, you know what's going on. You know what the deal is. And I've been saying quite a bit about attacks. You know, that could be, I don't know if that'll be happening this week necessarily, but it, it's just really what it is. The chaos is within every individual that is short circuiting, giving into a narrative. I mean, listen, if you live a life that, you know, is one filled with integrity and love and you do your best right and, and you're gentle with yourself when you make a mistake or if you get upset um and you didn't understand the situation or whatever you know all these things that we beat ourselves up over uh if we can keep our frequency level we're not going to cure the world's anger alone but if we join in this together yes and not this does not equate to let me put my agenda out there and my viewpoint because I'm right. You're not coming at it with the right intention. Okay, so funny. I started watching The Good Place again. <laughs> Comment down below if you watch that show. And they go into talking about like spiritual stuff and like one of them is intention. And it's like, you can't go to The Good Place because your intention was not good. Like you just wanted it for you. That's what we're talking about here. And that's the space that we're in. Now, this is going to be a big recovery time as of the recording of this video. Uh, Hurricane Ida just hit uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, and we'll see where it's heading next and what storms are going to be coming up yet again. We have been saying earth changes for a very long time. Expect it. And the one thing that I would say to you is strengthen your intuition. If you feel like you're not safe going to um, a group activity, okay? then don't do it. If you are afraid for someone around you, please help them get help, okay? If you feel like, normally I don't evacuate for a hurricane, but I'm doing it for this one, thank you, because you're needed in this world. Okay, don't go down with the ship, all right? Just make sure you're doing more to take care of yourself. And please, let's get out of, one of the, Sorry, they're coming in here talking and I'm trying to talk to you. One of the things that they're saying right now is that um, we're getting reckless and careless. Reckless and careless. Now, we see this all the time, don't we? Where people think that they're invincible. Just look at traffic. You might have laughed, but I'm not joking. <laughs> I don't like going on mountain roads around here because people get killed. It's not a joke. I mean, it's crazy. And why do they? Impatient drivers, entitled people, drunk drivers. It's crazy. So people are out there, it gets into a slippery slope here, but like people are out there self-medicating and then they're having like this sort of unhinged, dysfunctional impatience, wanting to run everybody. And again, that's just the example of traffic, okay? Or driving, I should say. That's not all the other examples that are, you know, that we could definitely go deep into here. And they're saying we're in a state where everyone's trying to take advantage of one another. We're not working together. We're not being cooperative enough with one another or with the earth. And it's going to show. Now, some people's definition of cooperation is I tell you what's going to happen and you just have to go along with it. Of course, you're going to help me. 
you're basically my personal assistant, even though I'm not. (laughs) I love using that as an example because it really does show we're in this sort of, yeah, they're saying everyone went into this uh, self-preserving state, which looks like narcissism or sociopathy. It can look like that. Um, not an expert, not a diagnosis. So sick of having to say the obvious stuff, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so, you know, everyone has kind of gone into this self-preservation uh, mode. And it's all out of fear. And, you know, there are people that are operating from a very dysfunctional place because they're not healing. They were exposed to something. You see what I mean? Like it goes really, really deep here. And then they start acting out and then everybody else starts to get scared and their energy starts to shift. And that's where we're at. Now, what does that mean about this week? Some discovery around this, some self-reflection, looking at you, right? And looking at how you show up. Where do you get self-righteous? Where do you think you know everything? We all do it. (laughs) We all do it. Where do we take advantage of people? Where do we just assume people are going to step up and take care of us? Right? There's a lot. Oh my God. Okay. So like I just saw like a crack, like a veil that solidified and it cracked and it started folding in. And then I heard dimension and then I saw a tornado. And so it was like another dimension is a tornado. So something is getting sucked out or something's coming at us. If you want to see it that way. And uh, that's a little strange because I've been seeing a lot of notices about tornadoes, not around here, but just weird videos popping up on YouTube, for example, and the suggested. I guess maybe because Ida just came through and it was producing her. I'm not sure if it produced tornadoes, but it could have, right? So maybe that was it. But still, there's that imagery going on there. (coughs) Excuse me. I, I need that clear, please. One second. I see waves. I see literally people crashing into a wall and they're mad. And they're breaking it down. It's a brick wall. It, it's not like, you know. I don't know what this is. I see stuff happening. Like, I just see all these, like, vignettes all over the place. And one image kind of fades into another. So, what are we supposed to do with this, though? <laughs> Hold on. Let me get this. We're going to learn more clearly than ever where things need to change. But it's not about the self-righteous uppity people getting out there and saying, this is how I believe and this is how you should believe. That's not doing anybody any favors. It's a fool's game. This is about I hear you. Where did where did that perspective come from? Ah, I see. Okay, oh, I can understand that. If I grew up like that, I would feel the same way. Or if I had all of those things happen to me, I would feel the same way. Well, thank you for understanding. I know. Can you imagine a conversation conversation actually going like civilized? Okay, right. And then the other person maybe feeling a little more open, saying, "I understand where you're coming from too. I just I don't know. I don't know if I would be comfortable going down that road." This is the kind of thing that we need to get to. We're not going to do it this week. <laughs> Listen, I wish we could, but I don't think it's going to happen. So what do we need to do? We need to be keeping, not in a pretentious way, not in the spiritual sidestepping way of, oh, just overlook it. Here's a spiritual cop-out sentence. Here we go. Just do it like that. Everything will be fine. How's that working? Stop. It's not working. (laughs) We need a new way (laughs) because this is a mess out here. So keeping it steady taking care, take care of yourself, see where, identify where you have your fears and identify where you have your prejudice. Everybody has something that they're afraid of. And so the wall goes up around something, right? Um, or your assumptions about it. What makes you hateful? What gets you so mad? Now there are a lot of things going on in the world that can make you mad. And I'm in this too. There are things that have angered me to the point where I'm like, 
did that person seriously that that is representing that company seriously just put that state this was on linkedin let's just say it was leaning a little more towards like sympathy towards some very hateful evil people that you probably know who i'm talking about right now sympathy I don't know. Anybody going to clamp down on that? I don't know. But, oof. <laughs> you know, and, and of course, the, the question of freedom is going to be coming up again. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Am I saying that this is going to be like the big old L word that sounds like a prison door closing? Maybe not. Maybe not. It depends. It depends on where you live. Like, I'm, I have people all over the world who are watching this video. Um, and some of you already are in that position. Australia, some areas in Australia, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think, last I heard. Uh, so there's that, and of course people still recovering, trying to rebuild after all of the storms. I mean, there's just, there's just a mess going on. So what do we do with that? It's what we were just saying. If we spend this time working on ourselves, okay, should have been doing this the whole time. <laughs> it comes in stages, right? But engage in a creative project. I know that sounds silly, but I am not kidding you. If you've ever been really riled up, okay, and ticked off and whatever, and you just sat down and maybe you cooked a meal, if you like cooking, or maybe you baked something, or maybe you, I don't know, you know, built a bench. I'm looking at this, This you guys have seen this before. Hold on, let's see if I can raise this up. This is what I made. This is a prayer board. This is just a canvas and it has Lakta paper on it. And I just use it to put my readings on it. It's a nice little sacred space. It's travel friendly, not, not like in luggage, but <laughs> I can take it out to my balcony or take it to my studio or whatever, right? I made this when I was feeling really down and lonely and lost. I was going through a moment. You know, it's a it's that deep soul stirring thing. Like, what am I supposed to be doing now? And so I sat and I made this over the course of a couple of days. No. Yeah, because I had to wait for paint to dry. <laughs> anyway, point is, is that this is what I put my energy into. And you know what I was done? I felt cleansed. Now, you could do that a lot of different ways. It could be a creative project. It could be reading a book. It could be journaling. It could be going out doing yoga. It could be going for a hike. It could be anything. But especially during this time, this is what we need to be doing. We need to be making sure that we're not trying to cut off connection from one another, but working towards having a healthier connection with one another. Okay, so let's get the cards because again, let's let's bring this down into the 3D and see what's happening for us. All right, so let's see if we can make any more sense <laughs> out of that all over the place message. If you haven't checked it out yet, I uh, have already posted sort of a month overview and then I did pull some cards for every astrological sign. I'm not an astrologer, but I did do that just to divvy up the energy, right? So I could tune in for each group. All right. Caught unaware. Caught unawares. <laughs> So it's like people are going out and they're just living their lives. Okay, we'll get to this, it's harmony. They're having fun. Something catches us off guard. You know, this is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 this year. Stay steady, no matter what. Help where you can. Do not pity people. That is not it. Don't ever pity somebody. Jump in and give them love. If you guys notice anytime somebody, you know, because we're a support team here, <laughs> basically, when someone leaves a comment and they're like, I'm going through X, Y, and Z, you will usually see me say, I'm so sorry to hear that, or, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, God forbid. Um, but it's usually I'm sending you my love or I'm thinking of you, you know, that sort of thing. So we are becoming really good at processing, not numb, not desensitized, aware, wise, and watching, all right? So we're stepping back and we're seeing the narrative from a different 
perspective. Um, again, please be careful around crowded places. Take weather seriously. I feel like there's going to be an earthquake here in Colorado. I don't... I mean, we get landslides quite a bit. Avalanches, wildfires, that sort of thing. Uh, all right, let's get more into this. So Harmony, they really keep going. Yeah, there's stuff going on. Yes, you should be aware. But you know what? We can make the effects less by being in our true light, Harmony. Now, we can't be out there having our personalities just igniting off of somebody else's personality. We can't just be ruthless with one another. Wanting to win at all costs, even if it means just winning an argument. Now, some of you, you know, I talk about setting boundaries all the time. So maybe you're out there trying to set a boundary with somebody. Set it and, and back up. People who are playing petty games, who are using one another, who are abusing their power, who are trying to manipulate, you know, participating in manipulative narratives. You're a bad person if you don't do this, this, and this for society. If you know, you know, right? Um... About the biggest <laughs> con oh no I shouldn't say that it's about the biggest um, way to control people and get them scared okay I heard new variant all right uh, awakening again I'm not saying that this stuff isn't real of course it's real but why it's here. That's different than I think what we've been told. At least that's a feeling I'm getting. Who am I? Right? But awakening. We're waking up. We're saying, eh, get this. No, no, no. You're trying to get me all upset. <laughs> Again, I get feisty. I have all this Scorpio energy in me. Like, I, I do. I get feisty. And I believe in that. I'm passionate. I'm just so passionate. But we can be passionate about harmony. And that's tricky because, again, it's not about spiritually sidestepping and just going, whatever, love and light. Bleh. You know, it, it's not authentic. It's not your intentions are not good. You just want to bypass it, right? So it's not going to land. It's not going to stick. You feel me? So part of this awakening and awakening to the needed harmony is, you know, we can still express our opinions to one another. We're going to have a common enemy here. Okay, that's what's happening. We're going to have to band together. You're going to see party lines, at least here in the United States. Go. <laughs> Some of you just laughed. Okay, maybe maybe it's not so like, <laughs> maybe not completely. Okay, but we're going to start seeing people realizing how ridiculous that is and saying, now we don't need to fight against each other. We, we made sport of it before, but no, not anymore. Wisdom. I'm telling you guys, eye-opening time. And it is deep wisdom that gets activated in us. That's what it is. And beauty. Oh, we're bringing that beauty back, honey. That is what we are doing. <laughs> we are saying no. We want to have beautiful connections. We want beautiful energy. We want love in this world. We don't want people to be, um, you know, terrified or... <sighs> I'm telling you guys, there's so many things. So many things. Um... September can be very much of a dip energy, sort of dip, thin, lowered, scrambled, but not for you. Not for you. <laughs> and this isn't like, oh, I'm, I'm an all-knowing, seeing beast or whatever. I don't know. That's like the man behind the curtain, right? Let's not be dumb. Oh! <laughs> Everybody calm down. <laughs> gonna be all right it's not all right right now but it will be okay <laughs> Whew, that was a lot positive thoughts create positive results let's talk spiritual sidestepping let me read this just for funsies divine love and wisdom i call upon you now i know that my mind and emotions are eternally and continuously connected to you 
truth. Uh, I ask my higher self to be aware and conscious of the love and light that is within every person and situation. True to some extent, I would add on to that, that um, I, I think this is coming up for a couple of different reasons. Is positive energy important? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what law of attraction is all about. You heard of it, right? Um, <laughs> but you can't be fake. You fake it till you make it. That's uh, how I manifested my crib behind me. <laughs> stop. People, the world, stop. Listen, <laughs> the way we get to a positive emotion is by processing the negativity. Okay, so we're going to see it. We're going to be inundated with it. There might be a scramble. We don't know what we're doing. People are fighting against one another. <sighs> Friend, what do you need? All right. We're both in trouble here. And we're supposed to be enemies, but let's help each other out. Let's be there for one another. It's not going to happen overnight, but less division is what we're trying to get at here. So the reason why I said this is spiritual sidestepping is that positive thoughts create positive results. That is like such a bumper sticker or like an inspirational poster with a cute kitty hanging by one paw. What are you talking about? Like what? That's not giving people space to be authentic. You're a human being. You're going to experience the whole range of emotions because you're supposed to. So what? You're going to, you're going to cut off part of your soul's path and purpose because it'll make everybody else feel better. I kind of want to go into this food for thought moment. Let's talk about toxic sayings. What's the common denominator? Oh, everybody else has it so much worse than you. Look at, look at how lucky you are. Be grateful. Yeah, that's true. Be grateful. But how diminishing? How diminishing? If you've ever been the black sheep of your family, most of you probably have been because you're the light worker that showed up in a dysfunctional family. Doesn't mean you're their savior. It just means you're the contrast. And when somebody doesn't like what is unknown to them or what makes them look at themselves, if they don't like an image in the mirror, they're going to smash the mirror. And that's you. And that, well, most of you probably being scapegoated. So if you ever have been in a situation, maybe it's groups of friends and a workplace where you're constantly getting scapegoated. And I'm not saying play the victim and whine and do all that, but I'm saying like, no, this is like really happening to you. And someone comes and says, well, what's the common denominator? Look at all these people who are so irritated with you. You're the common denominator. We can't do that anymore. As a matter of fact, I cringe so much when I hear, I just heard this uh, online the other day, good people attract good people. You might be pushing a person who has been abused over the edge. Shut your mouth. Let me explain that. Cause oh God, she's kind of feisty. She's like, she's disgusted in this one. <laughs> Uh, let me explain what I'm saying here. If if someone has been abused, okay, and they don't have any sense of self-worth and they're going out and repeating this pattern, they're attracting in all these people, maybe they are cluster B types or whatever. They're trying to save everybody. And so anybody who has anything going on, which is most people, they're going to come in and maybe even use an empathic person. And so what they're seeing is that they're attracting in people who are just making themselves out to be victims and basically saying my existence means more than yours. And they're getting abused. They're getting treated very, very badly. And then there's a societal narrative of if you're surrounded by people who are harming you, you're to blame. If you were a good person, you wouldn't be having any, you feel me? You know this. You've heard this. We need a reminder. I hear it in all these spiritual shows. If you're putting out negativity, negativity is going to come back to you. I mean, it's true. I mean, we're talking like basic law of attraction, right?
right? But just because someone is in a space of negativity doesn't make them a demon. It does not make them a horrible person. And I want some of you out there to hear this. Just because you're going through a hard time and your dingbat friends are saying, good vibes only, maybe they bought a t-shirt that says it, get new friends. Those people are not bothered with you. They're not bothered with you. When someone is going through a rough time, and usually you go through a rough time when you're doing like the deep soul work. It's not, it's not sunshine and rainbows, people. It's not. Now, I'm not saying be an enabler to somebody who's always victimizing themselves so that you come running and save them. Discernment. <laughs> we have to learn to discern. But please let's stop using just to protect just as a blanket thing, just in case someone is hanging on by a thread who can't take one more piece of blame coming at them when they've already been knocked down for things that are not their fault. Let's stop saying things like, what's the common denominator? It's toxic. Let's stop saying good vibes only. What, nobody's ever allowed to be depressed? Honestly, that's a pretty good sign that you're not dealing with an actual empath. Why do I say that? Empaths do experience depression. They take on everything. So someone who is just pretending to always be positive? Careful. Send it my way. I'll take care of it. I'm so fed up. <laughs> or good people attract good people. And then everybody's like, thumbs up. Yes, yes. I love the toxic positivity that's going on here. But it's more serious than that. That's why I don't like this. Positive thoughts create positive results. Ish. But what if you're just in that place on your path where you're going through a dark night of the soul? Are you supposed to feel worse for processing and going through a lesson and coming on out? What's even worse would be someone telling you to be in denial about how you're feeling to make them more comfortable. Can we stop? Can we stop doing that to one another? This absolutely ties into everything that we're saying here. <laughs> I said a lot in this reading, but it's everything that we're saying here because we treat each other horribly. We do not give each other room to have our own personalities. You know how amazing it is and I'm still on the internet? Because I wasn't supposed to speak up. I used to get death threats. Oh, yes. I heard people saying some iteration of you're not what I expect. Therefore, you are bad. You want to look around and see what's going on in this world. The unspoken thing is the sloppy thing. Because we want everything nice and neat and tidy and just give it to me straight so that I can get on with my life. You don't like it tough. <laughs> it's not you guys. I know it's I'm not like sort of talking all like, like I got this PSA going and <laughs> I am preaching to the choir. I know that. But let me say this in support of you. I feel you. I'm there with you. I know what it is to be a scapegoat. I know what it is to be diminished and really have it deeply embedded in me that I'm not worth anything. And my only sense of worth is showing up for other people and doing their bidding. As long as I keep them happy, then we're doing our job and the world can keep turning, right? You are not a bad person if you can't save people, okay? Or save them out of whatever stupid situation they got themselves into. Start looking at that, okay? Like, you're in this spot your car broke down, not unexpectedly, but because that stupid check engine light's been on for two weeks. <laughs> it's been chugging and whining and screaming at you and then you're shocked that it left you sit and now I gotta come get you at three in the morning. You know, <laughs> I just came up with that example. But you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's that kind of thing. You do not need to let people keep making you feel bad for feeling bad or that somehow you're screwing up your life because you're not being positive. Will positive thinking, you know, attract in positivity? Yes. But you get there by going through your lessons. 
okay? Like, you don't need to feel bad for feeling bad. I want to get you processed and through that, come through, okay? But the next time somebody tries to make you feel guilty for not being a little ray of sunshine for their comfort, it's not you. You are not the problem. And I hope this helps. And if you want me to talk more on this, we can. But again, let's just recap really quickly here. Stop saying what's the common denominator because you're exposing yourself as somebody who wants to sidestep and usually it's because it's self-serving. You don't want to have to be accountable for someone else's unhappiness. Not that you have to be, but you don't want to have to be a support system to that person. Now, some of you are hearing this and you're taking it the other way and you're like, uh, no, I've got somebody who constantly victimizes themselves and pulls me down and they will not take any feedback. Those aren't the people that I'm talking about. Those are energetic vampires. <laughs> okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about scapegoated people who aren't given room to even find themselves because people keep kicking them while they're down. And that's what it is. Do not say good people attract good people. That's actually not true. Good people can attract terrible people because the terrible people want their light. If you think positively, your life will be perfect. That's a lie. That is a lie. And it's meant to inflict some sense of guilt in you for not doing enough in your life. Human beings are messy. They are dichotomous. All right, they ebb and flow in their emotions. It's what you're supposed to do. That's part of your soul's contract. Don't feel guilty for it. When you're ready to find your heart and open it again and pull up, you will. Just be discerning. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.